Hey everyone, welcome Booster Tutor. I'm Brandon. I don't know if you've heard, but a little thing called Modern Horizon 2 is coming out. And technically, this weekend is its pre release. And technically, some of you get to actually do it in person. And I'm very jealous of you because I sadly cannot. My local shop still not doing it. They will open up for DD, they said, hopefully. Let's just keep our fingers crossed for that. But. I was able to get a little pre-release kit here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up, we're gonna see what we get, and we're gonna make a deck, see like what we probably maybe could have played in a different, you know, reality where all this isn't going on. And you know, just to, you know, just just really just get a feel for the cards that we won't get to play in draft or sealed or anything. Sadly, sadly. So yeah, let's get to it. All right, here we go. Let's open this up, see what kind of deck we can make. Hopefully something good, though this set's so crazy. Who even, oh my God, seriously, there we go. Who even knows? So let's see here. All right, uh, let's, let's save, let's save that pre-release card. And here's the dice. Got a little, where's that, where's that? There we go. A little man, a little symbol there. Just a blue dice. All right, we're gonna save this. Hopefully something good. Probably not though. First pack, let's see. All right, uh, I'm not really gonna go over like the commons and commons just cause we'll go over those later. Like, uh, or at least like when we go over the deck and stuff. So we'll at least see what we get, you know? Cause you know, there's, there's some, uh, Showcase cards, and there's some old frames in here. The Ribbon Watcher, Scroll Sovereign, Ghostlet Drifter, Fire and Ice is in here, and Persist, right? Not bad, not bad. And then Foil Urban Dagger Tooth. Nice, nice, all right. I guess I should read what Persist is, since it is the rare. Uh, return target knowledge creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a minus one, minus one counter on it. Not bad. We got something good, something that has like ETBs or just a really good creature that can take the minus one, minus one. Yeah, that's great. Like that, right there. Seven mana, two, four, when there's battlefield, you create two one ones, uh, flyers. Like, pfft, heck yeah. You can invoke that and then use persist. And it's just freaking all gravy, all gravy. All right, here we go. Oh, right there, we got a sketch card. Got uh, old Diavin my Elder, nice. Oops. And we got uh what is that? Dalthy Voidwalker. Let's see black black shadow. If a card we put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, instead exile it with a void counter on it. Sacrifice the void walker, choose an exile card an opponent owns with a void counter on it. You may play it this turn without paying its mana cost. Holy crap, that's good. Alright, and then a foil constable of the realm. Whew. All right. Black looking good so far since it's the two rares we got. Uh, let's see. No, nothing. Oh, here we go. Old Border Ornithopter of Paradise. Nice. Got a sketch Abundant of Harvest, or Abundant Harvest, I should say. Got Break the Ice. Rootwala. Lucid Dreams and Vindicate. Nice, nice. Another black card. I have to take a splash of white in there though. And Unmark Grave, another black card. Holy crap. Unmark Grave. Oh, sorry. Vindicate, we should know. Destroy target permanent. Uh, um, wait a minute. Oh, nice. They have the old. Uh, I like that. I like that. Uh, let's see. Unmark Grave. One in a black. Search your library for an knowledge card. Put that card in a graveyard, then shovel. I guess that kind of goes with Persist. It's not as exciting though, I must say. A little, that's a little, that's a little eh. It's like four mana to. It's two cards for four mana to get a creature card from your graveyard and put it in a play with a minus one, minus one counter, basically. <laughs> Is that playable? That might be playable. Depends on what cards you have, of course, but I don't know. I don't know. That's pretty, that's pretty crazy. All right, Scuttle Tide, Fey Offerings, uh, Spreading Insurrection, and Sea Drake. I like that art. That's cool. And 
Oh. Zabaz, the Glimmer Wasp. One mana for a 0-0 zero, zero, modular 1. Uh, if a modular triggered ability would put one or more 1-1 one -one counters on a creature you control, that many plus one 1-1 one -one counters are put instead. Short artifact you control. Why would you do that? Uh, or white he gains play. Oh, for the modular. That's why. And pay white against playing until the turn. That's a that's an interesting card. Interesting card. And a clue token. Sure. All right. Two more packs. That, I didn't like that rare at all. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Got a, Oh, that's cool. Late to dinner sketch card. I'm not the biggest fan of these sketch cards. Like, okay, they're kind of cool, but I don't know. Could have come with a better idea, I feel like. I don't want to say it's lazy, but it feels a little lazy. All right, here we go. Clattering Augur. Gloves. Visionary. Counterspell. Nice. And, oh, hell yeah. Oh, uh, was it? Gedron Diadra? Wow. Okay, four mana, but it's one in a Grixis. Um, protection from permits with corruption counters on them. Four loyalty, plus one. Each opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. Put a corruption counter on up to one other target creature or planeswalker. Minus three. That's her plus one. That's pretty good. Minus three. Gain control of target creature or planeswalker until on turn. Untap it and put a corruption counter on it. It gains haste on turn to turn. And minus seven. Gain control of each opponent with... That's interesting. Interesting. Definitely a commander card, but that could be a good limited card if you can get the man to go off. Wow. Nice. Nice. All right. And the last pack, let's see here. No, no fetches. No fetches, it looks like. All right, another Ornithopter, Old Border. Another Abundant Harvest sketched. Okay, this is the same pack. What the frick? Okay, uh, Abiding Grace. Captain Ripley, nice. Underworld Hermit, and... A Scourge Familiar, and... Suspend, okay, and crack open. Okay, uh, suspend is pay, or just one white, or one blue. Exile target creature and put two time counters on it. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. Exile target creature and put two time counters on it. Okay, I guess. It's good for like, uh, you know, getting something out of the way for a little bit if you need to. Um... It's good for getting rid of tokens. It's good if you want to have like a blink effect type of thing. I don't know. I don't know about that. That's interesting. It's interesting. All right. All right. And our pre-release card is suspend. <laughs> of course. Of course. And it's just tokens in there. All right. Uh, well, definitely black. Maybe Grixis. I don't know. That'd be fun. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. All right. So. Usually I'll go through like all the cards. Hey, here's what you can make. Blah blah blah. I mean, I got, I got her. So I had, had to make uh, a deck around her. So yeah, I mean, also uh, blue and black. Basically, that combination got all the rares and everything. So you like might as well just do that since white was kind of close, but it just couldn't get there. So we got Gray Adana. Uh, we were did, told what she did. She's amazing, freaking broken ass card. So let's see. We got Unholy Heat. We'll start with that. That has an instant one mana. Uh, deals two damage to any target or plane or creature or planeswalker. And then if you have Delirium, it does six. So great early game, great late game. Love that. Bone shards, one mana removal to sorcery. Uh, destroy target creature planeswalker. But as additional cost, you have to sacrifice a creature or discard a card. That or discard a card is like so good for uh, madness, so great. Speak of madness, Blazing Root Walla, one mana, it's a one one, you can pay a red to give it plus two plus O, oh, making it a three one basically. Only do that once per turn, but also madness is zero, so it's almost like a free spell if you can, you know, if you play bone shards to kill something and then you just get this for free, hey, not bad. We have Mental Journey, which uh, six mana to draw three cards instant speed, that's fine, it's a, it's a bit much, but I basically need it for the uh, basic land cycling because I'm three colors. I don't have the best fixing, so I'm running that. If I get it when I, I need land, perfect. I'll definitely use it for that. If you get later in the game and I have all my land, hey, draw three cards, sure. 
Clattering Augur. One a black for a 1-1. One, one. It can't block. That's fine. Who cares? Uh, enters battlefield. You draw a card and lose a life. Sure. I'll pay two mana, draw a card, lose a life. And then if it dies, like say I sacrifice the bone shards, I can pay for it, return to my hand. I wish it's battlefield. That'd be awesome. To the hand. Sure. Why not? It's very slow. But um, like say I need a discard outlet or something. Paying four mana to, you know, discard th something twice. Why not? Okay, what is this? Do, do, do three? I don't know. Voidwalker. Black, black. It's a 3 2. It has shadow. If a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, instead, Axelite with a void counter on it. So a lot, a lot of counters going on in uh, these decks here. Got these uh, corruption counters, got void counters. And then I can tap, sacrifice it, uh, choose an XL card an opponent owns with a void counter on it. You may play that, play it this turn without paying its mana cost. So if a card, so it's not even creatures, it's just any card. So just get their best card basically, as long as it went to the graveyard from anywhere, it doesn't even have to be like it was on the battlefield or they played it, it can just get milled. So awesome, great card for limited, uh, a, little, a little fragile, like you, you could exile or, you know, put void counters and stuff and then it dies, you kind of like crap. Um, counter spell and sealed, you gotta play like some counters. Well, blue, blue for a hard counter, can't get much better than that. Uh, fire and ice. So you have one and a red. Deals two damage uh, as you choose among one or two targets, and or I should say one blue tap target permit draw a card. Sure, fine, fine. I'll take it. Persist one a black. We went over that. You just get a creature from your graveyard. Pin a play. Minus one, minus one count on it for two mana. Totally worth it. We have vermin gorger. One in black for a 2-2, two, two. you tap it, sacrifice another creature, each opponent loses two life, you gain two life. So with the her abilities to just uh, take opponent's creatures, that's great. Uh, yeah, you can give them corruption counters to keep them, or like to, to make them so they can't hurt her or anything. Or is it you two? No, it's just her. Um, or later on, try and grab it. But if you're like, you know what? Kind of just want to deal with that right now. Use this, sacrifice it. Also, if you have stuff just like, hey, it's a way to end the game eventually as long as you have enough creatures. Ornithopter Paradise, O2 for two, flying, tap, add, mana of any color. Great little fixer need for this deck. Then we have two of the Reavers. This is two and a red for a two, three. Has a madness of one and red, which is very nice. But as long as it's your turn, it gets plus two, plus oh, for three mana for a four, three. That's fine. I'll play that. It's a nice little filler uh, common card. It's better than, you know, three mana for a three, two. Um, that you see a lot of times, but also madness cost. If you can get it for two bone shards, discard it, kill a creature, get a four, three for, for two mana. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, Arcbound tracker. This one, it's interesting. Three mana for two, two with madness is like, Ooh, that's not great. And the modular, I don't, I guess I could put it on the ornithopter basically. Uh, but the whole, uh, whenever you cast a spell other than your first, each turn, put one counter on it. So, Madness makes things cheaper. I have a lot of like one and two drops here. So, you know, could be, could be good. Um, speaking of that vein, we have Captain Riley Vance, uh, two and a red for a three, two. When we cast your third spell each turn, put one counter on Captain Ripley Vance. The end deals damage equal to its power target. So this one's a little more iffy, I'd have to say. But if you get to go off once, dealing four damage to anything, that's great. That's great. Just, it's going to be hard getting that. I mean, this is sealed. It can go long. You get like, you know, some early stuff late in the game. You just hold it back a little bit and you're like, okay, I'll do, I'll cast these three, four damage to you and I'll attack you for three or something like that, whatever. But you know, it's, it's a little iffy that probably could get cut, uh, but I like it. I like to try it out where this, this deck is more fun than I think anything. Ghostlit Drifter, uh, two in a blue for a two, two flyer. Sure, why not? It's the Windrake. Pay two in the blue. Another target creature gains flying tilt turn. Yes, please. Always love that. I could channel it, which apparently is a thing. X blue, discard it. X target creatures gain flying tilt turn. So nice little finisher if you need. You have a bunch of creatures. Maybe you're a stalled board state. Give them all flying. There you go. This one, I think it's very interesting. Uh, Mount Velus, Manticore. Two red red for a three four. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may discard a card. When you do, 
Mount Valis Manticore deals X damage to any target where X is a number of card types the discarded card has. We've got a mouthful. All right. So if I'm reading this correctly, beginning of combat, I have our next card, I'll say. You know, Hell Mongrel. It has Creature Nightmare Dog. Three types on it, right? Right? Is that how that works? Or is it only these two? Because if it's these two enchantment creature, screw that. Artifact creature, get rid of that. I don't care about that. But if it's all three, I don't know if it's counting subtypes, uh, then that's amazing. Like, I'm discarding this, paying three to get it, and also dealing three damage. I'll have to read up. I'm not quite sure on that. But if that's true, totally run this card. That's pretty good. But if I'm dealing this and it's just creature, so I'm only dealing one, that's not worth it. Get rid of it. Like, it's fine. It's a nice discard outlet. It's dealing damage at least, so I can... And also getting my madness to go off. But it's kind of like, eh, I'd rather have uh, one of the other cards, which made crabs. That was a lot cooler, I think, for this type of deck, just because it's it's more fun. All right, we already talked about Hell Mongrel. It's like Wild Mongrel, but bigger. Uh, three and a black, four, three, discarded card. It gets plus one, plus one until the turn. Madness, two and a black. Wild Mongrel, always a really annoying S card, because... The thing with Wild Mongrel, though, is it gets out early, so you can have, like, a full hand, and you're just, you know... I'm going to attack you. Do you want to block with your 3-3? Three, three? And they're like, Ugh. I mean, if I block, you're going to discard like two cards and my 3-3 three, is dead. It's like, yes, that's the whole point. It's all the threat of activation. Very nice. This one is even bigger, so that's very nice. Uh, you can only have to discard one to maybe like, you know, you don't have to bluff and say, I'm going to discard four cards. And also, Madness Outlet. Perfect, perfect. Phantasmal Dreadmaw. Hell yes. Two blue blue for a 6-6 six, six of Trample. Downside... Yes, there is. Uh, when it becomes target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. That's fine. Sure, most times you're going to target it, or your opponent's going to target it. Guess what? It's going to be a kill spell anyway. So getting four mana for 6-6 six, six and drawing a kill spell, yes, yes. Speaking of kill spells, Terminal Agony. Two black, red, sorcery, destroy target creature, or madness, black and red. So uh, you could, if you're discounting a card, if it's at instant speed, you pay two mana and you get instant speed, destroy target creature. So great card, great card. More removal, mind collapse. Uh, three and red, instant. If it's your turn, you may sacrifice a mountain rather than pay this spell's mana cost. It deals five damage to target creature player, or sorry, planeswalker. Player would be amazing. Uh, so four mana to deal five damage to a creature or planeswalker. Sure, I'll play that anytime in limited. Freaking late game, I'm just flooded on land. I just sack a man, uh, a mountain, and I get to deal five damage to a creature. Yes, please, thank you. All right, we already did this part. Um, let's see. Next, we got Lucid Dreams. Three a blue blue sorcery. Draw X cards, where X is the number of card types among cards in your graveyard. So, I mean, yeah, maybe draw five mana, draw three cards, at sorcery speed. That's pretty basic. Anything above that, you're, it's just great. Uh, it's a little slow. Um, I don't know. That one, that one I'm kind of iffy about too, but sure, why not? Refill your hand. You're going to be discarding some stuff, so might as well. Uh, Archfiend of Sorrows. Five black black for seven mana if you just want to straight cast it. It's a four five flying. When air is a battlefield, creatures opponents control get minus two minus two until end of turn. Holy crap. This card's amazing. Uh, seven mana, yes, a lot. Uh, but... If you have a way, if you just want to discard it, you can give it you unearth later for five mana, which is nice. So it comes in, uh, it maybe wipes their board, at least takes out a big chunk of it. it. Has flying, hits for four, and then gets exiled. But if you can hard cast it or another way to get in, like say I want to, I put this to the graveyard, I discard it, then I hit persist. Holy crap, so good, so good. Um, and then last, we have Prophetic Titan for. Blue red for 4 4. Giant wizard has delirium. When air is the battlefield, choose one. If there are four more cards, if you have delirium, you choose both. So you can choose to either deal four damage, four damage to any target. Hell yes, that's amazing. Look at the top four cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest of them by your library, and then you random order. I mean, you're only doing that if you get the delirium to go off. You're always doing the four damage. That's so good because it hits the players. Oh, love it. And then we have a bridge. Now let's go over some of the other cards I was thinking about. Like, I'm not quite sure. On some, I just was like, no, no, thank you. Uh, Revolutionist. I mean, I like it because it has madness for four. Uh, it's a 3-3, three, three, which is like, okay, sure. But you get to return a 
uh, instant sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. So any kill spells, awesome. Persist, sure, whatever. Uh, Dream World Hermit, I just like it because it's dumb. Uh, four black black for a three three, and you make squirrels equal to your devotion when enters the battlefield. So at least you're making two. So six mana for five power and toughness total. Two of them are squirrels. I didn't really have enough black to justify throwing that in there, but that is a dumb card, and I would love to play that. Spreading Insurrection. The storm is not going to go off, most likely. Uh, if it had instant speed, sure, I guess, but the sorcery speed means I have to play like two spells. And then it's a seven mana, take three things. Uh, yeah, and then I can only sacrifice one with a vermin. It's, 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 it's not the best. It's, it's fine. Five mana just to take something is not great, though. So you're up here. Uh, another paradise or another chapter of paradise. I really do need it in this deck because I don't have the best fixing, but I just couldn't fit it in there. Maybe uh, cut the captain or dream and put that in there. Suspend, I want just because one mana and you get rid of a creature for at least two turns so it's better than bounce because bounce you know you bounce it it goes to their hand they just replay it this it's like it's gone at least for two it gets rid of tokens completely uh maybe if you want to use it for something for you know and the battlefield effects not really you're just using it and it's cheap so captain vance or the tracker i could get little counters on them and stuff uh but yeah, I think it just wasn't, it wasn't quite there. So if I had more room, I would throw it in there, but no. Uh, we got Torox, Torches, uh, whatever that is. I don't know what those words are. Um, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a card from it. That player discards that card, then discards a card at random. For sealed, that's really good. It's just, it's super slow. And sealed I know is super slow, but even for me, four mana, sorcery speed, their hand could be empty. It could just be in my hand. I'm like, oh, just get another card. Like, get two cards in your hand so I can use this. Uh, otherwise, I'm just like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm at Grave. Uh, I mean, I almost put it in there, but then I was like, what am I really doing it for? I'm putting in something in the graveyard. The only thing I really can get back is the Arch Fiend, which is fine. But if I don't, if I have that in my hand and I don't have that, and then I go through, and then I get this eventually... Like, then what am I getting? The Titan? I can only bring it back with Persist. Like, it was, it just wasn't working. Yeah, four mana. If I have both of these, then it's four mana to get anything on my deck and put a battlefield with a minus one, minus one counter, which is okay. But it's like, it's not worth two cards and four mana. So it's just, yeah, it just didn't do anything for me. The gloves, I mean, yeah, probably everyone's going to be running these lands, but just in case, I mean, if I, they're not, then it's just plus two, plus oh. Yeah, that's not worth it. Uh, familiar? I don't know. It's just too much mana. Like, I don't know what the point of this card is. Uh, Visionary was... It's okay. Uh, I like the fact that I can draw a card, discard a card. I don't like the fact that it costs a mana. And I don't like the fact that this is the 1-1. One, one. And Delirium, it, then it's just draw a card. So it's like, not just, but that's very good. But you have to pay three then. And it's like, ah, this isn't really worth it. Like, there's just a lot of things going on here. And now I'm adding up to a, like, really impressive card that I wanted to run. Hard evidence, I like this card a lot. I just didn't have the room for it. But one mana, zero three, and you get to a clue. Love that. That's so good. That's so good. This is the one I was talking about. Scuttle Tide. Two in a blue, enchantment, pay one, discard a card, create a crab. And if I have delirium, delirium, all my crabs get plus one, plus one. So they're all one fours. So I would, might run this instead of, uh, what was it? It was another discard outlet, I thought. Maybe it was just the captain. And that way to have another discard outlet. So yeah, I, I like this card. Uh, and it's way more fun than some of the cards I'm running. That's why it's like, oh, Lucid Dreams me. Like, I don't know. I really like that. I don't know. Maybe I would say that. Sea Drake, it's just not good enough. It's three mana for four, three fly, which is nice, but then you have to bounce two lands and I'll have me landfall. So what's the point? Uh well, I have like one artifact. Two, maybe. Seep through, just too slow, too slow. Wizard cycling, who cares? Uh, loose focus could be good, but I had a counter spell, so it's like it's either or with me here. So I'm just gonna play counter spell. Shattered ego, it's fine removal. It's not the best, but it's fine. Uh, parcel mirror, I mean, sure, it's filler. Uh, zealot, I mean, this like takes care of one one tokens, and that's about it. So maybe if I was playing at someone who had a bunch of squirrel tokens, sure, but it just really didn't do enough. And then of course my. Pre-release card, another 
now there's the spin. So there we go. It really, it was just all about her. Like, just want to run her. And the deck kind of came together. I kind of like it. Uh, it looks like it'd actually be kind of fun. A little madness going on and stuff. But, yeah. Yeah, not the most consistent thing. Probably should just cut that and try and go for more madness. But, yeah. Let me know uh, what you think. Sorry, I didn't really go over the other colors. Just because, I mean, it was obvious we're going to go this. And nothing else was really that great in those other colors. So, yeah, there we go. All right, there we go. Uh, not usually how I do these videos, but, I mean, come on. I got three color Planeswalker, and that Planeswalker is freaking awesome and limited. Of course I'm going to go that. I have to. I'm not going to look at any of the other colors. Throw them in the trash. Get out of here. This set looks crazy. Um... It's it's very it's funny how we just had uh, Time Spiral Remastered with all these like crazy mechanics from Magic's Pass, and then you have Modern Horizons Two, and it's like all these mechanics from Magic's Pass. It's like okay, I guess we're just we're just nostalgia. Just mm, 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 give it to me, please. Give it to me. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it looks like a ton of fun. If you're gonna go play in person, please be safe, but also have a ton of fun. It's been so freaking long, and this set looks just amazing to play on paper and just in person and unlimited. Ah, so jealous of you, so jealous of you. But yeah, uh, that's about it. It looks like a ton of fun, like I say. I'm, I'll, I'll have actually a collector's booster to open next week. I wanted to get a set booster, but I don't know if you saw the prices. They're kind of crazy. And I was like, you know what? We'll just stick with the collector's booster this time. And maybe in the future, if the prices go down, get a set booster. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. If you want to follow me on Twitter, booster underscore tutor. And I have officially returned to Twitch, twitch.tv slash booster tutor. And every Sunday uh, in the afternoon, usually around 12, I try to make it 12, we're doing Paper Commander, but with a game show twist. It's called Commander's Gambit. I put a lot of work into it just because I was very excited to do it. Uh, I don't know if anyone really likes it besides me, but I love it. I think it's a ton of fun. Um, it's really random. And yeah, just come check it out. We're still, we still got some technical snafus here and there, but you know, it's Switch. Who doesn't? Uh, just, you know, we're going to smooth those out as we go along. Just get that production quality up even more. And yeah, please check it out. Uh, like I said, twitch.tv slash boostertutor. And other than that, thank you all so much, and see you next draft. This program brought to you by viewers like you.